Hey guys, I'm Regal. Today we're gonna be playing Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition. This isn't the remaster, this is the original Steam release of the game. And we're gonna be doing an all bosses speedrun. So we're gonna be killing all 26 bosses in the game. That includes the DLC as well, because the DLC is actually bundled with this version. Uh, this is going to be the fastest known route uh, for the game. Um, and I'm also joined by my commentator. Hey guys, uh, Matt Apocalypse. I uh, run Dark Souls 3, but I happen to know quite a few things about this run. I watch Regal try to break the world record all the time, so this is going to be a good run. Yep, thanks for being here, Matt. All right, let's go ahead and get into the character creation. We also had a name incentive. Can you give that to me? I absolutely can. One last refresh for good measure. Naming the player is going to go to Dark S. Ol. Dark S. Dot yeah, like S old. is the middle initial. You, you got me, yes. right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's, it's our character name, Dark S. Ol. Okay. All right, let's just go over the character creation real quick. So we're going to start as a male, which is barely, barely matters. You actually can go slightly faster with acceleration speed with male, which is something that's not super well known. It's strange that there's any difference between them at all. But yeah, it's like actually a little bit faster to play as male. Uh, we're also going to start as Pyromancer for two big reasons. The Pyro Flame, which we're going to be using to wrong warp later in the run, and the Pyromancer armor also happens to be a perfect equip load to set up a glitch called Air Rolls, which relies on a very specific equip load. We're also going to start with Black Fire Bombs. That'll help us kill some enemies a little bit faster than without them. Other than that, everything's the same, and I think we're ready to go if you guys are. Uh, I, have a, I guess we'll do on go from five, five, four, three, two, one, go. Good luck. All right, we're going to start in this tutorial area, the Undead Asylum, and we're just going to try to get through it quick. We have the first boss coming up, which is what we're going to use these black fire bombs on immediately, at least half of them. Uh, and just trying to get to the end of this area. This is, uh, I guess, there's like four phases for this run that I want to talk about as I go through them. And of course, this is the beginning of the first phase, but we're gonna go to Asylum Demon immediately and open the door and run to a specific spot and then just start chucking bombs at him as he drops from the ceiling. So we're gonna stand right here, aim up, throw. Two, three, roll, four, Five. That was actually the best RNG as well, so that's nice. And we're off. And continuing through the asylum, normally you would pick up some a shield here and a weapon, but we don't need either of them, so we're just going to run right past them, knock this dude out of the way. He loves to block us. And then we're going to go to an enemy, or not an enemy, an NPC named Oscar, who's going to give us a key to leave. Call this boulder down. Get the Estus Flask, which we're going to use to heal as well as this key. And we'll continue on. And uh, we need to go upstairs before leaving to get our Pyro Flame. And these hollows are really annoying and they like to block us. So we're going to do a little roll here to bait them out. And hopefully they don't act too annoying, which they are literally yep. doing it. There it is, right there. Okay. Okay, all right, cool. Of course, he gave you the worst yeah. attack. Yeah, all of my practice, they haven't done this at all, and then they do it during the run. Classic. All right, nice. Okay, well, it's fine that they did a bunch of damage to us, because we're actually just going to rest at a bonfire immediately to level up our decks so we can wield a weapon later on. But yeah, now, now we're really getting into the, the thick of it, exiting the tutorial area. So the, I would say the main goal that we're trying to do right now is get to Anorlando to acquire the Lord Vessel so we can warp freely between bonfires and get our main source of damage for the whole run. But while we're going to do that, we're going to be killing bosses and acquiring gear on the way just because it's faster to do them now than it is to backtrack. And the first one that we have coming up is, or the second one really, is Taurus Demon. But before we go to him, we're gonna stop 
at the uh, Undead Bird Merchant and just try to avoid hollows while on the way there because this, this area is honestly kind of annoying. There's a bunch of enemies, but uh, uh, seem to be doing a pretty good job right now avoiding them. Here's a dragon. Don't worry about him yet. All right, so we need to buy a few things here. First thing is going to be throwing knives because we actually won't be able to wield our bow the whole time, but we do need a bow. We're going to buy a reinforced club, short bow, and then we're going to use a glitch called Prompt Swap to buy the rapier at a reduced cost because we did not have the souls for it. We do a little bit of scamming. Yeah, we, we, we scam a lot <laughs> of the, uh, the merchants in this run. And uh, so we're not going to get the gold pine resin. That's something you usually see runs doing in the past. We do not need that. Uh, we're trying to do a little skip here, but I failed it. So let's get it this time. There we go. Pick up this ring. This ring will not be used for its normal intended purposes. We literally just need a ring to activate a glitch later on called ESM. So that's why we picked that up. And coming up is the second boss. And we're going to be doing a new strat on him, hot off the presses. And hopefully it goes well. Because, like, there's a chance that either he won't do the right thing or the archers here will interrupt you, but hopefully it goes well because it's really cool. Hopefully the archers behave. All right, that's good. And he... Okay. Oh, man. Oh, nice. All right, he nice. did it. Nice. Let's go. Love to see it. That's not the fastest it can be, but that's still pretty good. I've only seen him jump off. Yeah, usually he jumps off, but that's, you know, acceptable. Okay. So this right here is probably the scariest part of the run. So hopefully this goes well. I'm going to try to cut the Drake Sword without the Gold Pine Risen. And it can go really poorly. So we might have to load a save, but I think it'll go fine. Okay, that's good. Good, good. One more. God. Nice, nice. Didn't even get hit by the archer. Let's go. That's really good. That, if you die there, it's really bad. But now we have the Drake Sword, and we're going to be using this as kind of an in-between weapon before we get our major source of damage. We're going to use this to kill the gargoyles and uh, the boss after that, and then we'll get rid of it uh, after that. Uh, we could actually kill gargoyles later, but since like they're just right here, it's faster to just kill them now. And we have a, a cool strat to prevent the enemies from targeting us while we go through this really sketchy room up here. Matt, can you talk about the uh, AI cancel for me while I do that? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, so in this game, uh, there's a few frames where the enemies are going to be looking for Regal here. But you're going to see him do a series of specific inputs, and you'll see him toggling a lot. Now, what's happening is the enemy is constantly checking for him, but whenever you swap equipment on the perfect frame, it uh, makes him untargetable until he interacts with them. So now he's not toggling anymore, so the enemies are going after them. So it's going to let you get away with some uh, sneaky business and essentially get up in bosses' faces right away instead of needing to chase them down. Yeah, it's like a stealth game. Hopefully this strat works too. This is also a newer strat that we have. Ah, we missed. It's OK. Just do the old strat instead. Yeah, so normal, like what we've been doing recently is uh, throwing a bomb at the beginning there to cut his tail to make this fight really consistent. But it's, it's pretty easy to miss it, and I just barely missed it there. I just got punched in the face. Okay. Didn't breathe. Nice. Okay, that wasn't the perfect fight, but that, that was fine. And we quit out there just as the boss dies to warp us back to the entrance here. And it also de-aggros all those enemies that were chasing me. Uh, that's really annoying when he does that. And I'm going to quit out here because there's a million dudes. Right <laughs> yeah, there's, there's so many. many. This is called reverse hollow room. Uh, there's not a fast way to do an AI 
cancel here, so we just kind of run through and hope it goes well, and that was fine. Okay, cool, we didn't die. That's all that matters. And now we're gonna be doing a pretty famous skip called Sin's Gate Skip. Matt, can you explain that for me as well? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the way this skip works, uh, he's gonna lure a hollow over, and um, when he lures a hollow over, he's gonna bait an attack and parry it, and the parry animation actually puts him in a spot that it's not quite um, kills you, but it creates this thing called a death cam. And in this death cam state, the game stops loading um, assets past a certain point, and he's gonna use this death cam to get past the closed gate. So he won't need to ring any bells to open Sen's fortress. And um, when he's moving, uh, moving around like this, he's actually kind of like a tank. So. If you've ever played like an old Capcom game where you move around like a tank. Yeah, like Resident Evil. Um, that's how his movement is working right now. And he's uh, heading to Sen's Fortress right now and he's gonna quit out in the perfect spot to set up uh, some cycles here. Yep, and when I quit out, it will remove the death cam. So you won't have to watch this for much longer. Also, I should mention, before anyone freaks out about it, we do have a cursor on the screen. That, that was part of the uh, glitch that we did at the Merchant Prompt Swap, and we're going to need it again. So bear with us while we have a cursor on the screen. We will get rid of it whenever we don't need it anymore. Uh, but yeah, this Sin's Fortress is a pretty chill place to run through. For speedrunners, it is like really well known for being kind of horrible for most people's first playthrough because it plays with your lack of knowledge. But everything kind of works the same way every time if, as long as you run through the cycles properly. So it's actually a really comfy spot to go through for speedrunning. Sense Funhouse. Uh, we, all, we didn't mention it on the Gargoyles, but we are using a major damage glitch called Boost Swap, which I just <laughs> really messed up right there. If you do it too fast, you get that animation, okay? But uh, Matt, can you explain Boost Swap for me? Yeah, absolutely. Here? Uh, so the uh, major glitch in this run uh, to deal damage is with Move Swap. It requires the use of the bow, which he purchased earlier. Oh, my okay. God. Yeah, because of that Move Swap uh, fail, uh, the cycle was a bit off there. But I didn't die, so that's cool. Now, the, um, the way this trick works mostly is um, he's going to do a series of inputs that involve the bow. Uh, he's going to be two-handing the bow uh, while swapping the weapon with uh, the, the Drake sword. And what actually happens is the game is a little confused. So the bow doesn't have a running attack or like a rolling attack or things like that. So because it thinks it's the bow, it actually replaces the running attack with the rapier's uh, running attack. So you'll be able to see him do this uh, like stabbing attack, which actually hits twice, which is very important for when we get the weapon coming up later and now. Yeah, thank you, Matt. So we're gonna do it again right here and not screw it up this time, hopefully. And don't worry, I will heal. That effect you see, it's not red tear stone ring, it is the blue tear stone ring, so there isn't any benefit of being low HP and I'd rather not die, especially with this enemy coming up named, uh, we call him Bob. He's very annoying. Uh, yeah, but this next fight, Iron Golem, is probably one of the more technical fights in the whole run. So hopefully it goes well. Yeah, Bob was nice. Yeah. Uh, that was Bob. All right. So we're going to try to do 400 damage below his knees to make him stagger. These hits are precise to do. Oh, he's going to stomp. OK, nice. We got him. And then after we get him staggered, we're going to do 200 more to make him fall. And where we have him staggered, we'll make him just fall right off the bridge. Nice. Looking good. Okay. So I think this is probably a good place to get some donations if we have any. Oh, we got a lot of love for you, Regal. We nice. got a lot of love. I need some help from the audience with this one. We just got a $150 donation. Let's give it up. $150. This comes from Rad Draconi, who says, a surprise GDQ appeared. What will you do? Donate. Thanks, y'all, for the work you put in to support such a great cause. We also received a $120 donation from Peanut. And oh, wow. Peanut says, thank you. Yeah, give it up, get up. That's awesome. Let's That's awesome. Peanut. 
Yeah. Uh, thank you, Regal, for being a great role model to all the runners whom you've helped over the years. Same for Matt and his great hair. <laughs> Good luck and Godspeed, Franker Z. Thank you, Peanut. Franker Z. And if I, I could uh, just remind everyone as well, we did have the incentive for the file name, but we do have another incentive open for uh, Dark Souls here, which is to choose the ending between Link the Fire and the Dark Lord. Currently, that is neck and neck with Link the Fire winning by $5, Ooh. 305 to 300 at the moment. That is anyone's game, and we, since we have this 10K overall goal for the end of day one, get your donations in and let's see what we can pull up for the end of this run. All right, thank you. So now we are in one of my least favorite areas in the game. This is Anorlando. <clears throat> it's a lot of running and a lot of things getting thrown at your back the whole time, as you can see right there. Uh, so far, the Guardians have been Yeah, they, they were nice fine. there. I did a little uh, small skip called Nami Rafters there to prevent one of them from even getting near me. So right now, we're going down to this bonfire below um, called the Dark Moon Tomb Bonfire. You don't have to do this, but since we are doing all bosses, we want to have this bonfire available to warp to later on when we come back to kill a couple other bosses. So we're going to run down here and grab it and then continue on our way. It's uh, also important to mention that there's only uh, a few bonfires in this game that you can even warp to. It's not like the newer games where you can warp to every bonfire. Only a few of them can be warped to. Well, I say a few. There's a decent amount, but definitely not all of them. And this is one of them. Now we're just going to continue on our way. As I said, our main goal right now is to get to Ornstein and Smoke kill them, get the Lord Vessel, and acquire our main source of damage, which we're going to get right before them. But we're just make a little stop for that on the way. This gargoyle is, can be really annoying. As you can see, look at him. Yeah, He's right in my way. Well. <laughs> oh, okay. well, oh, there we go. That's a good get way to lose him. Nice. So we didn't want him there because we want to actually do a quit out as we get to the end here. Nice. We got it. So that is going to send that elevator back down, uh, I can turn just to see. See, it's not there. Nice. So when we come back later to kill those other bosses, we don't have to call it to bring it back down, which it works differently than it does in Dark Souls 3, because that elevator is in Dark Souls 3 as well. Yeah, we, we pull the lever to, uh, you know, make it instantly go up and down. But um, we'll be quiet for this, because he has to hear some. Yeah, yeah, this is actually important for me, for me to listen here. Okay, they were nice. Okay. All right, we're good there. We still need audio cue for this upcoming guy. He's going to try oh, another thing trying to shoot me in the back. Okay, that actually didn't hit me. All right, cool. All right we're good. All right, this is pretty friendly. Yep, nope, not too bad. Okay, so now we're going to take this bonfire right here, but this is purely for safety. Uh, in a PB attempt, you really wouldn't want to take this because it's going to lose you time. But that's okay. We just don't want to die and lose a bunch of time, so we're just going to be safe. And now we're going to head down to the hidden basement of Anorlando and acquire our main weapon. The Gigatooth. The Gigatooth. So there's a bunch of gear here in chests. We only need one, and it's this bad boy. Nice. Oh, I forgot to do this. Go, I'm going to ward back for safety as well. So this weapon, when it gets upgraded, it, is, it does a ton of damage. Right now, it's at plus zero, and it's, it's OK. But later on, it's going to be real strong. However, like there is a drawback to it in that it's really heavy, and it also has really weird uh, upgrade materials that are hard to get, so that's definitely not great, but it certainly makes up for it. And it, do it doesn't lose uh, too much time. Like, there's another weapon called the Black Knight Greatsword, but this one's a little better. Can you, uh, we already talked about the AI break. Yeah. Here's gonna be another AI break. Yeah. Similar to what we did in the hollow room. We're gonna do this for ONS. You're gonna notice uh, Ornstein and Smo kinda 
look confused for a second. See, they're not moving right now, and he's just toggling his weapons until he gets set up for the perfect moment where they will aggro when he hits them. Okay. Get out of the air. All right. Nice. Okay, that was pretty good. So you'll notice that in addition to the damage he has right now, he's also staggering them over and over again. And that's one of the benefits of using this weapon is just staggering over and over again. The main reason why we do Super Smo is because Super Ornstein, you can't stagger like this over and over again. That was a nice. great fight. That was fight. really good. All right. That's a good start. So now we need to get the Lord Vessel that we've taken out the boss. This is Guinevere here. We are going to kill her because she talks too much. Now he actually has to use a throwing knife there because his arrows actually don't do enough damage at this point to do it in one. Yeah, we can't wield either of our weapons except for the dragon tooth. Like uh, the rapier and the bow, we don't have the stats for. And she actually, funny enough, has two HP, and my arrows only deal one point of damage because <laughs> I can't wield the bow. All right, we're warping back here just to set our bonfire here. And then we're going to warp to Firelink, and now we're going to take care of a boss called Stray Demon. But before we go to Stray Demon, we're going to stop at everyone's favorite NPC, Petrus. And we're going to buy a couple things from him just to do some glitches later on in the run. I'm going to try to do a strat here. That's cool, but it might screw it up. Oh. Ah, I didn't get it. Okay, that's fine. Very well. I think Petrus has better hair than me. <laughs> he is quite the haircut. So we're gonna buy a spell called Homeward and a Thorland Talisman. I'm not gonna use those yet, but we'll use them later. And uh, do you need an audio cue for the uh, eagle? I don't here? need an audio cue. I need a count. So I'm going to be doing a cutscene skip, a cutscene skip into an AI break off of the quit out here, and I need to count the uh, animation cycles. So I'm going to go quiet while I try to do that. Two, three, So I was counting his elbows going down there. And this skips the cutscenes that are going to play, which you can skip them, but it's still like faster to just have them not play at all. Yeah. And then these guys, you could, you, off of that quit out, you can piggyback into an AI break for these dudes who still like to block you, but at least they're not attacking me. Those guys okay. do so much damage. Yeah, they also can get into this boss fight with me as well. Hopefully they don't. So this is Stray. He's got a bunch of HP, and our weapon is still only a plus zero, so this is going to take a lot of hits. But it is faster to do this, because we're not right now we're in the second phase of the run where we are trying to get a bunch of damage and access the DLC. That's, that's the two main things we're, we're trying to do right now. And part of getting a lot of damage is getting into the Painted World to get a item called the Red Sign Substone, which we're going to be using to turn it into the Red Tear Stone Ring, which if you know, have played this game, you know what the Red Tear Stone Ring is. It's going to give us a massive damage boost whenever we're at low HP. Oh, we gotta avoid this guy. Okay, he almost got us. Stray is pretty nice there, didn't fly. That was actually a pretty good Stray fight. He, he can be very random. Yeah, so now we're on our way to the painted world. We did like you don't have to kill Stray to get to the painting, but he's there, and you don't want to backtrack. So we we kill him and grab the doll, and then head this way. So not only are we trying to get the red tear stone ring, we're also gonna try to uh, upgrade our dragon tooth because right now it's still a plus zero. We'll do that after this segment though. So now we're we're just going to Priscilla to grab the soapstone, and we'll uh, explain the ESM glitch a little bit as well upcoming. That's what's gonna give us the red tearstone ring out of the red sign substone. Okay, oh, no. I did not even hear that. 
You'll notice he's also uh, toggling his weapon every once in a while, every time he starts sprinting, and that's to uh, kind of save some uh, time getting up to acceleration with his sprinting. It doesn't seem like much, but over the course of this long run, it's going to save him a notable amount of time. Yeah, it might save like 10 seconds over the whole run <laughs> to do these like little toggles right here that are very unnecessary, but you know, they, they give you something to do in these long running sections and they do save time. So, yeah. so another thing besides toggling that he does to activate it is sometimes you'll see him holding guard as well. Yeah. That also uh, saves some. Well, there's also another thing with you see me holding block. That is because if you are running in this game and you pr try to roll, you will get a jump. But if you're blocking while doing that, you will not jump. So that is a nice thing. So you see me doing it right now. So these birds are pretty scary, but we can strafe them as long as they don't act too weird. All right, that was good. So we're going to get the soapstone now, and we're going to do a fall damage cancel from here. Nice. Nice. Now, he actually um, is iframing the fall damage there. When yeah. he hits the plunge and he does what's called like a delayed air roll, it's going to protect him from taking fall damage there. And here's a little skip here to just skip pretty much all of the painter world. Just go straight to the boss. We're going to do a quit out ahead, which the purpose of this quit out is literally just to make the game uh, allow you to hit Priscilla twice before she warps away. I don't know why that works, but it does. It's weird. This game's weird. I mean, Miyazaki kind of just threw in the painted world last minute, so. Yeah, there's there's all sorts of weird stuff in this game, but you know, whatever. So we're actually, what we're gonna do is, uh, so she goes invisible, but we're gonna stand in a certain spot and lock onto her, and our lock-on's gonna follow her. So we will know where she is, oh, hopefully. Yes. There she is. She's gonna do this annoying attack. You know, just playing it safe on her, she can actually just one-shot you from full HP. Just her uh, weapon will just bleed you out. Yeah, that's pretty scary. <laughs> okay, so now that we've gotten the red sign soapstone, we're heading to Hydra. Hydra is going to do a couple things for us. First, it's just required to kill Hydra in order to get into the DLC. But also, Hydra's gonna drop a scale, which we're gonna use to upgrade our dragon to. But here, first of all, at Andre, we're gonna do some pretty intense menuing to do a few things, but mostly to set up the ESM glitch. Can you talk about it a little bit for me, Matt, while I do this? Oh yeah, absolutely. So what he's gonna do here is he's gonna store this uh, massive amount of arrows he just bought. Um, and he's going to use that to make, by basically buy 90, 999 pikes okay. to make a very big, heavy pike. And that's going to um, give him a really, really high equipment load. And uh, it's like a carryover from Demon Souls. It's like spaghetti code that just got left in the game from Demon Souls. And it gives us this really high equipment load that maxes out um, the game's equipment like storage and he's going to use that to his advantage to trick the game into thinking his uh red soapstone is the um red tear stone ring there it is he equipped it right there now it's because um it has the same index as the red tear stone ring for some reason and so when he goes to equip the soapstone the game disagree. just thinks it's uh, the ring instead yeah. So right now we have the red sign soapstone equipped to our ring slot, but the game's just like, oh, this is the red tier stone ring. I don't see any difference. So right now we also have a negative quantity stored, uh, which we're going to, it, it, in some weird menuing, some more weird menuing, we're going to take that negative quantity and apply it to our dragon scales to drop a negative amount of dragon scales, which will actually end up giving us a positive amount of dragon scales. It's like, you know, subtracting a negative, you get a positive. That For that reason, we cannot quit out, so that's why you saw me killing those trees there, so I can rest at that bonfire. Those, those trees would normally block you from resting at that bonfire, so I just kill them on the way, but we also need to kill them because um, we need a few extra souls 
in order to upgrade our dragon tooth to uh, plus two, because it actually is very expensive to upgrade our dragon tooth. So we're gonna do an RTSR setup here. Now that we have the ring on, we can get the benefits from it. All right, we're gonna do another fall damage cancel here. Into Hydra. Now you're gonna see him stand in very specific positions to basically not get hit by the Hydra and also be in a really nice spot that he can cut the heads off. This is kind of a weird RNG he's giving me here. Okay. Nice. Very good. That's good that we didn't die, because if we died, we would lose that negative quantity and it would lose us a bit of time. So now we're gonna inject it right here. So negative 998. Well, that gives us a bunch of dragon scales. So now we can upgrade our dragon tooth to maximum. However, it's very expensive to do so, so we don't have enough souls to do that. So we're gonna do it like a little bit at a time. And we also need to, now that Hydra's dead, this NPC will spawn here and we needed to kill it to uh, continue with unlocking the DLC. And save the princess dust. And then we immediately kill her. Because we need the souls from her to <laughs> upgrade the dragon tooth. So, yeah. Thank you, Dusk. <laughs> it's also just slow to talk to her. So now we'll go to plus two. And we'll head to Anor Londo to continue with our quest of entering the DLC. Because there's another NPC we need to kill here. There's a super convoluted way to get into the DLC for this game. Oh, yes. I, I don't know how you could find it normally yeah. without looking up a guide. I think anything. they actually posted instructions on how to do it the day that the <laughs> DLC came out, but uh, don't quote me on that. I think that they did, though, because it's so weird. Um, but yeah, so we haven't rung any of the bells yet, though. In fact, we won't ring the bells at all this run, so we have not placed the Lord Vessel to d uh, defuse the uh, Golden Fog Gates in the game. So we're going to have to do a skip to get around it here. So you can see it's still there. This is called uh, Swag FGS. Seamwalk, Archives, Golden Fog Gate Skip. It is annoying, as you can see. I'm trying to get on a seam here. It's, it's a very skinny little pixel to stand on. Yeah. And I fell off, great. Okay, it's all right. This is probably, <laughs> this might be my least favorite skip. Just, like this first part is so annoying. You'll see he's doing um, some visual cues here with the bow and then just rolling forward. So he wants to get himself in the perfect position so he can just go around the fog gate here. Yeah, and I'm taking it a little slow because, like, I don't want to redo this. All right, now we Very are nice. on top of the roof here. We're not quite done yet. Now we need to get back in bounds. Uh, which used to be really annoying, but then uh, shout outs to Androv, who found a way to get through this roof a little better. I just accidentally screwed that up. Okay, um, so I'm gonna store a jump here. You basically just jump with really low stamina. Oh, I messed up here. I need to have the bow out. Okay, that's all right. Just store another jump here. Okay, we got it, and we're gonna aim at a certain spot. Nice, we got it. There was a boar right here. That's actually why we quit out here, because this boar would just kill you. Like, half the time, this guy would just kill you as soon as you clipped yeah. in bounds. So Giga we, boar. We just started uh, quitting out there. It looks scary, but it's much better that way. All right, we're going to do another move swap here and heal up. And this enemy that we're about to kill right there is necessary in order to get into the DLC. Here he's gonna drop the broken pendant, and now we can get into the DLC. We still got some other stuff we're gonna take care of before we go into there, because we want to get more souls and upgrade our dragon tooth. And there's also uh, some safety routing we're gonna do as well. So it'll still be a little bit before we get to the DLC. 
Right now, we're just gonna go and take out C. So this is a new version of an old skip. Have you ever heard of Duke skip before to where you can skip the uh, part of the game where you die two Cs, and then you have to go through the whole prison section? This skip prevents you from having to do that. It saves a massive amount of time. Oh my god. <laughs> I actually never died to that before. That guy can shoot you? He's never killed me before. I, I've never seen it. That's actually incredible. Okay. All right. Well, we got to redo all that, unfortunately. Uh, I mean, this gives us a chance to talk about uh, the double menu, too, probably. Yeah, as soon as I was trying to quit out, he just shot me. <laughs> How rude. All right. We get to do this again now. All right. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the, um, the prompt swapping. The whole reason that he was oh, able to... We can to, actually, uh, speaking of that, we can move, move the, the cursor, cursor off the screen. Yeah, All right, there the, we go. we're free yeah. from the there cursor. No more cursor, guys. <laughs> now, um, the reason, the whole reason that they can actually store that quantity where he was able to drop negative amounts was actually because thanks to porting the game to PC, you can essentially open two menus with both the controller and the mouse and keyboard. And that, that's like a very funny way that we can manipulate the game by just moving two menus around. So you guys get to see this amazing skip twice. Probably have time to do a donation, yeah? Yeah, this is actually be a good time. For sure. I wasn't sure if we needed a little focus here, so I was giving you a quiet time. No, but we have plenty of love coming in for you. So uh, we have a $25 donation coming through from Fashion Tarkus. I see GDQ, Dark Souls, and Able Gamers, and I donate. Gaming is my hobby, and I get so happy when I see what Able Gamers does for people with disabilities. Good luck on the run, and also, Dark Souls 2 rules. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dark Souls 2 is good, I agree. Yeah, for sure. And just a, um, a little shout out here, uh, we had a $25 donation come through for Sickify, Slickify, apologies, saying praise the 10K. And uh, we are getting ever so closer to that, $8,360. I would really, really love to see 10K before we can wrap up Dark Souls. Um, and uh, do we have time for one more or? Yeah, absolutely. You, you got it. We have a $100 donation. Coming through for Dave. Yeah, give it up for Dave. Give it up for Dave. Absolutely. With a simple message. Link the fire is lame. Accept the inevitable darkness. And that does change the tides of our bid war. Currently, Dark Lord is now winning $335 to Link the Fire's 305. Still anybody's game. Still got a little bit of more time before we have to make a decision on that. So get your donations in in support of Able Gamers to see if you can turn the tides at the end of this run. All right, thank you. So hopefully we don't die this time. As you can tell, like, this game is really mean, and <laughs> if you die, you lose a bunch of time, especially when you have to redo, like, a skip like this. They almost got shot in the back right there. Like, nothing I can do. The enemies in this section are so scary. Yeah, this is uh, one of the scariest parts of the run. Oops. Almost fell off. I mean, like, you can kind of do the same thing, and it usually works. But, oh, I accidentally upwarped? That's hilarious, dude. Oh, <laughs> uh, unintentional. Uh, okay, I guess we're going to do the old version of Duke Skip now. Well, so, somewhat old. I, okay, hold on. Let's just do, let's just do <laughs> what I was like. You're, I was not trying to upwarp there. You see, I, like, shot to the top. I, I accidentally did a glitch there. Let's set up like we we're gonna do that. <laughs> oh, I need to take off this armor, actually. Okay. Hopefully this guy doesn't shoot me this time. He was aiming at you again. Oh, yeah, no, like, that, <laughs> that shot, that happens. I just never had him kill me before. Usually, it leaves you, like, with hardly any HP. So this is the first instant of the air roll glitch. Remember at the beginning, I was saying that we need a very specific equip load to activate a glitch? Well, that's what it is. You can just roll in the air. And that is a newer method of Duke skipping, which is faster. Unless you die, then it's not faster, like I did. 
All right, now we're on our way to Thief and going through the Crystal Caves. And this, hopefully this goes well, because this is probably the worst place in the run to die. But uh, there's a, normally a skip that we'll do in like PB attempts called uh, a slope quit out here, which saves like 15, 20 seconds. Uh, in game time, but doesn't save a lot RTA and is extremely difficult to mess up and die. And I would have to redo all that again, so we're not doing that. Um, we're just gonna go through kind of like what people used to do back in the day. There's a, there's a long history of strats in this game. Constantly evolving speedrun. We noticed he also equipped the Dusk Ring here, and that makes yeah. it a lot easier to set up um, Red Tear Stone Ring here. Yeah. When he unequips the ring, it's going to bring his health bar back to full, and it's going to be a really nice spot to give him that damage buff. Yeah. If, if anyone was wondering what my HPs have, it's because I have on the Dusk Crown Ring, which is, as Matt pointed out, very helpful for setting up Red Tear Stone Ring. So the, uh, the actual boss fight here is not Thief, it is the Clams. We're going to try to do some specific pathing to not have the Clams enter the boss fight with us. So hopefully it goes well. And the Clams like to invite themselves into the boss fight. I think that's going to work. All right, no clams. I think we're safe. So then it's just uh, three running attacks on Thief here. And that's it. You'll notice he was attacking Thief kind of sideways, and it's because the Dragon Tooth has such a large hitbox that if you actually go straight on, you don't. You'll miss hitting the core, which is the weak spot of Thief there. So that's why Regal was running attack sideways against the boss there. All right, so now we have plus five Dragon Tooth, and we're going to do a AFK setup for Gwendolyn here. And ideally, if everything goes correctly, the boss will just sit there and let him run at him. Ooh, I got it now. Perfect. So this is normally the most random boss in the entire game for speedrunnings. But because of that trick, no longer, no longer insane RNG on that boss anymore. Which is, I am super happy with that. It is definitely run changing. Yeah. Like you used to be able, you would lose like maybe 20 seconds to that boss. But that strat, not only does it save like 12 seconds, but it also is something you'll get every time if you execute properly. That RTSR setup is, is kind of spooky. <laughs> yeah, you get some pretty low ones, don't you? But I mean, as long as you don't have zero, you're good. Yeah. Uh, this upcoming kill is really cool. One of the coolest in the in the game, I would say. Uh, shout out to once again Androv for finding this. We're gonna um, actually use a different weapon with the boost swap this time. We're gonna use the pike with the dragon tooth. Get a pretty sweet kill here. Stand in this corner, wait for a specific animation. Got it. Oh, nice. Nice. And it's dead, just like that. So what happened there is I just hit the wing. Oops. Yeah, that's correct. I hit the wing of the boss at a very specific part where it's like just barely in range for the weapon to hit it. And the pike moose swap uh, is normally not better than the rapier, but it does do a double hit as well. However, it, it does a, a double hit at a faster tick rate. So that gives you just enough time to get both ticks on the boss in order to finish it off there. And now we're heading to the Sif. So these, we're, we're basically just cleaning up the bosses before the DLC now. N normally, you would actually do Sif and Butterfly after the DLC, but uh, because of uh, losing that bonfire that we have there, when we take our safety bonfire in the DLC later, we're doing them now. 
Um, the reason people usually do these bosses later is mostly just so you can get to the DLC earlier, because the DLC is one of the most difficult and random parts of this run, so people just want to get to that part of the game sooner. There's not a huge drawback to doing these bosses now, uh, and the big, big advantage is I get to take a safety bonfire without losing a bunch of time. Uh, Sif can be a pretty annoying boss. He likes to jump around a lot. Um, so hopefully we get good RNG. If, w when you get a fast Sif fight, man, it's, it looks really fast, but you can get some really bad ones if he decides to not cooperate with you. All right, that, was, that was one of the fast ones. Nice, very good. All right, now it's DLC time. Being in Vegas, it's appropriate. We call this the casino <laughs> because it is so random. You will lose like 50 seconds here doing nothing wrong. And that is, uh, that is much more random than the rest of the run, I would say, for, for like the 10 minutes of it. Like the most random 10 minutes in the whole game. So things like Calamite, RNG, and like Manus doing some silly attacks. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Guardian, Sanctuary Guardian has like one attack that you just one-shot it and it's insanely fast. And then it has uh, some patterns that you'll just lose 15 seconds to. Like, it's just, it's all over the place. Oh, okay, that's okay. I was, I, I was gonna do a fall damage cancel there. I did it a little too late. I got a really fast one. So that's something you have to actually uh, judge on your fall damage. Uh, cancels, especially on this particular one, is you'll get sometimes faster than other times plunges, so you have to uh, adjust the speed, and that one was a little too fast for me to properly judge it, so. Luckily, it's not that okay. much of a loss. Though. No, no, that's like 40 seconds loss. It's okay. We got it. We got a really generous estimate, because uh, things can go really wrong in this run, so um, we should be fine. May I uh, sneak in a quick donation while we're yes. getting back to where we were? Yes. Awesome. We have uh, JJ Webhead donating $10, saying, first time watching GDQ live while at TwitchCon and first time donating. Good luck, Regal, and happy TwitchCon, everyone. Thank you. Uh, we also got a $10 donation from a regular guy. I feel like I've learned and continue to learn so much about speedrunning from watching you run Dark Souls, Regal. Thanks for all the time you put into this craft and continued good luck in this run. Thank you, Greg. Uh, this lake is very annoying. It's okay, though. All right. So we're not going to take this first bonfire because that would ruin our red tier stone ring setup. And honestly, not that big of a deal if we die here. Like, it's, it's a run back, but it's, it's not as bad as the other ones. Like, dying to the next boss without one would be much, much worse. So this guy is okay. We, we want to have a, a RTSR. Like, if we took that bonfire, there'd be no way to set up our HP, uh, at least not very consistently. So hopefully he doesn't do anything really trolly. Okay, get, get, <laughs> okay. Three. All right. There's the one shot, at least. <laughs> He, he did worst attack, worst attack. Okay, one shot. Cool. All right. So yeah, that that uh, the bosses can actually take like counter damage depending on the animations that they're in when you hit them. And normally that's a two shot attack on him, but if he does that specific jump, you kill him in one hit. So that's cool. It didn't really save much time though because he shot a bunch of lightning at me. All right, that's our safety bonfire right there. And we're just going to throw in some levels there uh, just so we don't lose a bunch of souls or something. And uh, this next area is kind of annoying, so we're going to do uh, an AFK strat to um, make the enemies not attack us. But, of course, all of these AI cancels that we're doing, you have to do from a quit out because it resets the uh, AI timer to a consistent time. It's a very specific frame, so they always have to do their setups off of a quit out. It's 
It's honestly, I think, a good thing that it's that way, because it's kind of, like, restricted. Otherwise, you would just AFK the whole game, you know? So here's more air rolls. Yep. Um, so I'm going to do a... Uh, well, I don't know why I did that. But okay. We're going to do a, an RTSR setup for um, Artorias, because since I rested at the bonfire, I don't have that HP, and I did not want to send this up. But down and just run okay it didn't activate I guess I didn't wait for it to go all the way down I almost died thanks Dark Souls oh my gosh dude <laughs> that's okay it's just kind of trolling me here all right let's wait for it to go down all right now we should be good there we go There's another way to set it up that's a little faster, but it's annoying because it messes with the dogs down there. And those dogs, we're oh. going to have to take them out after we kill Artorius. Who is the next boss, by the way? Artorius. And um, hopefully we don't get one specific type of RNG. And if we don't get that, we should be fine. But yeah, you're, you're starting to see like the real potential of this weapon now that we have it at plus five. It does a whole lot of damage. And hopefully you can get a sense of that here. If you've played this game before, nice. and you fought this boss, I don't know if you killed him in two hits before, but yeah, this weapon is crazy. We actually have like an insane setup right now with a plus five weapon, red tier stone ring, and moose swap, so we're just doing a lot right now. And right now we're on our way to basically what spawned all these newer routes that you see people running nowadays. It's a strat called Gothless Melee Gothless Calamite. First, we need to kill these dogs because they are very annoying. This is why I did that really slow setup because these guys, can, if they like, if you manipulate them in the wrong way, they'll just act completely different. Like, okay, that was good. All right, I need to focus on this. Matt, can you kind of explain what I'm doing as I'm doing it? Yeah, so normally you'd have to go all the way around to actually have Goth shoot down Calamite, but he's going to do a setup here that's going to skip that entirely. So he's going to stand in a spot that he won't get hit by the fire here. And thanks to the uh, Dragon Tooth having this massive uh, hitbox, we can hit the tail here. Nice. It doesn't look like it, Got but the tail actually goes all the way to the ground here. Uh, the hit bo the hurt box of it, so he's able to hit it with the tooth. That's the hardest part right there, is that first hit. And you'll see him do these little uh, animation cancels. What he's actually looking for is the health bar. You saw it right there, and that lets him know that Calamite's coming back. Now, um, with this, uh, with this strat, you'll see in like remaster, they actually do it with magic. They used to do it with magic in this run as well, until um, one of the runners had a dream about doing it with the dragon tooth. And when he woke up that next day, he decided to try it out, and he hit that dragon's tail with the dragon tooth. Yeah, Androv once again coming up with strats. This was his dream. Uh, I missed the last hit. Uh, it's lame. It's okay. These in-between hits are actually not too bad to do. But I missed that one there. The reason okay. he's doing these shrugs here is so he can time when to look for the health bar here, because he doesn't want to look at the health bar leaving the screen. He wants to see when the health bar comes back on, which was right there. There nice. we go. And we're going to quit out as he begins his death anim- oh, that's not good. Okay. So, as he begins his death animation, he won't die immediately, but he actually will die after we load in. For some reason, he just works completely different than all the other bosses when you kill him this way. So it's about to give me the Calamity Ring. There it is. Yeah. All right, so luckily I bought an extra bomb, so even though I threw that one, it's fine. Yeah, that's good to clap for. That's like, honestly, the hardest strat in the whole run. 
is doing that consistently. That was one of the biggest route changes in this. Yes, that strat alone saved like four minutes off of this run. I'm going to go buy this extra bomb. I, I don't want to die to better chaos. May provide a, a small update on our bid war going on here um, while we do it, or we need a moment. Yes, go ahead. Okay, fine. apologies there. Uh, the bid war is so electric. I, that's the reason why I wanted to update it. The hands are changing rapidly currently. This second, Dark Lord is winning by uh, 380 to 365. But like five seconds ago, Link, uh, Link the Fire was winning. So this bid war is completely up in the air right now. We're also just shy of $8,500. Really want to see that 10K. Continue to get your donations in for Able Gamers, y'all. Here's another skip. This is going to skip all of Ulusil Township. Nice. Which means that we don't have to do anything in that area whatsoever, especially because we killed Calamite without Goth. This is a huge time save as well in combination with the Gothless Calamite. Uh, we did that by doing a plunge on the edge of the uh, elevator there and then doing a, another delayed roll into air rolls. So like multiple glitches kind of combining for a really big skip there. I love that setup too. It reminds me of like an Ocarina of Time setup. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of bow setups in this run. Where you like get in a corner set up with the bow and you are in a consistent location mm. to do something specific. So here's Manus. This is one of the highest skill level run or skill level fights in the run. I would say probably the the most skill intensive one that isn't like a weird fight like Calamite is. Okay, I th this should be good. We can maybe finish him off here. Nice. Oh, oh okay, my. one more. Dead. Nice. That wasn't too bad though. He didn't do the wombo combo. Yeah, that's what killed him so fast. <laughs> that's the DLC. That wasn't too bad of a DLC. Nice. Whew. And so now we're transitioning into the fourth part of the run, which is just clean up. Just clean up. We're going to go on a boss rush here. Because the rest of the bosses in the game, we will be able to take out pretty easily with this setup that we have here. But we're going to start doing a bunch of skips in a row. This is one of my favorite parts of the run. We're going to do a bunch of cool skips. Starting with uh, my favorite skip, Blight Town skip. So we will not be entering Blight Town whatsoever. Can you uh, talk about this a little bit while I'm starting to do it, Matt? Oh, yeah, absolutely. This, uh, this skip has some funny business that he's about to do here with the bow. Um, what he's got to do here is make the game save his position uh, up here at the top, but load uh, new Londo below here. So when he quits out down below, the bottom area is loaded, but the top area isn't. So that's what he did there. Yeah, you'll see me spawn without anything below my feet because new Londo ruin is going to load. See, there's nothing up top here. And then it lets him do this quit out when he hit the ground, which actually saves his position at the bottom. So he's going to load in at the bottom here. And that sets him up to do another crazy part of this skip. Nice. And he's got to run on this, like, pixel-wide seam. It looks like he, like, it, this looks pretty simple, but if he does an error at all with his movement, he will fall off, and it really messes it all up. Okay. Oh, oh shoot. It did, I, I didn't get the delayed roll. Mm. Unfortunate. Now so we I, have to redo that. As you can see, he uh, fell into Quelag's domain. He was going for a, a fall damage cancel there to get all the way down into Quelag's cave. But it's okay. We can we can see it again. Yeah. That was a that was a good skip until the very end. Though. <laughs> that was actually good, other than like the last little bit. Uh, I tried to do a delayed roll input, and it did not go through, unfortunately. All right, so once again, uh, we're going to see that setup with the bow. And this tells the game, hey, I'm up top. Yeah, and it also, like, 
trying to set up in a very particular spot, and then this next one is going to set up a particular angle as well. And I, I need to just barely touch New Londo Ruins for like less than four frames. That way it keeps my position above rather than putting my position in New Londo, New Londo Ruins, but it ends up loading New Londo Ruins. Okay, so we get to do this part again. This is really not easy to do, by the way. Yeah, it is very easy to fall. I mean, you fall off once, it's hard to like get going. You like usually fall off multiple times. So we'll see if I can do it without falling off again. Oh. Also, my souls were kind of blocking my vision. That's fun. There we Very go. nice. Nice. No Blight Town necessary. And Quilog, normally you would fight Quilog very early in the game. But since we are not really following the rules of the game, we get to fight her much later and she dies real fast. And coming up is this this next skip is what the skip that got me into speedrunning this game. Shout outs to Kumul. Uh, this is a skip called the Fire Sage Elevator Clip. So we're gonna stand by this elevator here and uh, set up our T cell. We're gonna hang one foot off and then quit out over and over again. Our quit, our, the uh, stand up animation from the quit out is gonna move us slightly slightly backwards and if you pay attention the elevator is actually loading in after my character loads in and eventually we're just gonna fall through the, <laughs> the elevator and go straight downwards we couldn't just quit out on top of the elevator though because it's unstable ground it would warp us off so we have to do this and we're gonna fall through this hole and do a plunge attack and luckily there's this boss right below <laughs> who happens to be uh, plungeable because he is a literally a copy of Asylum Demon. And he helps us uh, survive and his AI doesn't load at all because you don't go through the normal AI trigger for it. Yeah, that skip is incredible. I love it. We also got a double hit there, which is really rare. And here's gonna be the first wrong warp we've done in the run, if I can do it properly. Nice. And then we're, this wrong work's going to take us back to Undead Bird. So now we can take care of Capra Demon and Gaping Dragon. There's a, one of the many lower Undead Bird skips that we have. Oh, this oh, is bad. Oh, no. <laughs> you really don't want to move slot too fast. You get that really long animation. So hopefully this goes OK. This is bad. I think we'll be OK, maybe. Okay, I'm gonna go down here. This is this is not good, but we'll we'll be okay. A certified dog moment. Yeah, the, the, this area is honestly like really sketch, and people usually come here early on in their playthroughs. And man, this is basically a late game area. <laughs> okay. So now we're gonna take out Capra. Okay, the dog got me. Perfect. <laughs> that, that's, that wasn't exactly how I was supposed to go, but it's okay. We have a lot of HP and a lot of damage, so as long as we're not in RTSR range, you can kind of plow through stuff. And you, you do not need RTSR for Capra. He doesn't have enough HP to warrant it. We are going to be getting it for this boss, though. This is going to be another skip called Depths Out of Bounds. Uh, if I could not do that. This is another load trigger magic trick. Yeah, this... Clip actually works the same way that it worked for Blighttown Skip when I loaded the bottom area. 
while I was standing in the uh, upper area, it's the exact same, th same thing. You just need to be, just quit out in a certain spot and you'll just clip right through. So this skip can be, can go wrong. We're gonna hope it goes well. Um, there's uh, this jump right here, which is annoying because you don't always get over, but we did, nice. Oh, nice. And then this next jump is easy to mess up as well. And then we have to hope Gaping Dragon behaves. Okay, that's good. Awesome. Now, what does Gaping have to say about this run? Oh, he likes the run, guys. Head slam. Let's go. All right. Nice. All right. So there's a percentage of the time where he will not do that head slam, and it is awful. It is really bad. But he did it, so that's cool. Magic Sniper was nice to you, too. Yeah. All right, and here's going to be the uh, Isla segment, pretty much, is going to be coming up through here. So we're going to do Centipede into Meta Chaos. Do you guys like the color red? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. This, this is one of my least favorite bosses. He is very annoying and doesn't really behave properly a lot of the time. So you get some really cursed fights with this guy. I think I can already tell. I think he's a little too far back. Yeah, he's in a weird spot and he's doing something stupid. Okay. All right. So that wasn't a good fight, but we made it through. Man. <laughs> yeah, he he did not behave as he is. He doesn't like to behave. He's a bad boy. All right, so this uh, this is uh, also kind of not like the most fun part, where you're just running through uh, eye bleeding lava. <laughs> Probably have time for a donation. Yeah, yeah, this is a good time. Oh, absolutely. So we have one hundred dollars coming through from Phil Safer. Soulsborns are always a treat to watch get speedrun into the ground. Watching speedrunners destroy bosses that have taken us multiple hours to be in a matter of minutes is always a treat. Keep up the great work, Regal. Oh, and let the darkness consume all. I think, I think we could all agree with that, with what's on the screen with the lava at the moment. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah please bring us darkness. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, we also received $20 from DeathChain33. Hey, Regal. I just wanted to say thanks for all the advice you've given me in learning Dark Souls speedrunning. I was always lost, but you and the rest of the Speed Souls community have helped me tremendously over the past year. Thanks so much for being such a great person. Good luck with the run. Oh, thank you, Death Chain, and shout out to Speed Souls. Absolutely, we still we still going? We got time for one more? Yeah, one, one more. One, one more, more you got it. We have $25 coming through from Curious Avi saying, my wife's favorite phrase, you died. <laughs> oh, that's not my favorite. I imagine not. Mm. So we're gonna come up here to a very famous boss for how much people dislike it. It has a very interesting design, um, which is not most people's favorite. However, we have a way to circumvent the normal, normal strategy that you're supposed to do, where there's these orbs on the side and you go around and punch them out. Meanwhile, the floor is falling out from below you. We are gonna just completely skip doing all that with some well-placed bombs. That's why I bought that extra bomb in the DLC, because it's pretty bad if you mess this up. So hopefully it goes okay. We do have one extra bomb in case like I missed one or something. But yeah, this is called Toki Bombs, named after the uh, speedrunner that found them. This is one of the oldest strats in the game. And uh, if, anyone, if anyone wants to play this game a whole, whole lot like me, I recommend learning this, because it makes this boss way more tolerable. I'm just gonna take it slow so we don't mess up here. The second bomb, you kind of have to throw a little fast, though. Nice. Very good. Let's see if we get the Firestorm. Yeah, there's also a really annoying attack called a Firestorm, which you're not safe here at all. But we didn't get it. That's all right. All right. Perfect. Better Chaos down. OK, we're going to do a uh, another wrong warp here to finish off the Isolith section. We're gonna wrong warp to ceaseless discharge. 
Just a more recent trick that they found too. More relevant in oh, come any percent than it is in this, but it still helps with speed. Yeah, this is uh, called a homeward wrong warp. Um, it uses a glitch called a spell swap, and you just, you cast like homeward with the animation of the fireball, and that gives you enough time to move um, after the effect has gone off, and in that movement time, you can actually rest at the bonfire as you're warping away, and if you do that, then it ju you just get a wrong warp. Um, it takes you to the default location listed in the game uh, for that area of which the bonfire you were previously resting at is. And so for the that Demon Ruins area where the Centipede bonfire was, the default location was there where I just spawned in. It takes us straight to Ceaseless. I rested at that bonfire just for safety. This isn't a hard strat to do to kill Ceaseless, but if I messed up and died, this would be one of the worst time losses possible. So just for like a few seconds of time loss, resting at that bonfire is a good idea. All right, we're gonna aggro him from afar, roll, attack, and then two more running attacks, and he's dead. So now we got to warp back to Firelink Shrine, and we're going to be going to Four Kings. We still have not placed the Lord Vessel. <laughs> like, we, we haven't run the bells, we still haven't placed the Lord Vessel, but we're going to kill Nito in a bit, and we need to place the Lord Vessel to get to Nito, because as, as far as we know right now, there's no way to skip Nito's uh, Golden Fog Gate. Never but, say never, though. Yeah, it could certainly happen. As of right now, though, we don't know a way. So we got to do four kings, and we're going to place the Lord Vessel with Calf after taking them out. We're going to do an RTSR setup here first, though. Just backstepping the elevator. These fall damage RTSR setups are so nice because they're pretty fairly consistent. Like, it's, it's better than using an enemy. And um, fall damage in this game is also percentage-based. So d just wh how whatever HP you have, in whatever route you're running, the same fall damage setups will still work, which is great. It also They also work really well in combination with the Dust Crown Ring right there. So I like put it on, took some damage, and then took it off, and I had like a easy RTSR setup. Here's a skip called Seal Skip. So normally you would have to uh, go to an NPC to get a key, to then go turn a crank to get all this water out. But we just do a, uh, a slope quit out there that I set up with the running attack. And now we're out of bounds. And apparently you can swim in this game. You see right here, just surrounded by water, but. Now it looks like running, but it's definitely swimming. Yeah, yeah. this is precursor to Sekiro. Drop in. Oh, I did not equip the ring. That was almost bad. <laughs> <that. laughs> remember, he, get, he gets a ring from Sif. Yeah. And that's the actual key to entering this boss fight. Yeah. If you fall without it, uh, you just, you die. Yeah. There's like a little icon in the top, and I noticed it wasn't there. <laughs> it's a good thing I did. Now he's going to drop an item so he knows where to go in this fight. Yeah, so uh, where I landed there is basically where the second king's going to spawn. What about the third king? We don't need to know about the third king, actually. As you can see, I just killed one king, and they're already past halfway. So, yeah, you don't need to actually kill four kings. So you can deal extra damage to them while they're dying, and it applies to the entire health bar. So if you have enough damage that you deal as they're dying, then uh, you can get less than four kings. You can even get one king if you have a some setup, but um, this route we only get two, which is still pretty good though. All right, we're taking this for safety again. This is another bonfire because if we died on the way on the if we died on the final boss, then it would take us a long time to get back to him if we didn't take that. So. 
We need to make sure we say yes here, because if we said no, we would then have to go ring those bells that we did not <laughs> ring. So we're gonna make sure we say no, or don't say no to Calf. All right, and then we're heading to the penultimate segment. Neo. Model. <laughs> Used to be like one of my least favorite bosses, but now we have some cool strats for Neo that hopefully go well. Mm -hmm. uh, I can take a uh, safety bonfire just in case. But yeah, the, no, now we're on our way to pinwheel, though. Do uh, a time for a donation here? Yeah, this actually would be a good time. You got it. Just wanted to give a small update as well. We're at a very numerically pleasing $8,765 right in a row there. But you know what's more pleasing? is $10,000. So I think we can get there by the end of this run. We only have a little bit left, though. Uh, but you know who's helping us get there is Final Phase with a $100 donation. Yeah, give it up for Final Phase, everybody. Nice. First time in person at a GDQ event, so of course I had to donate. I love seeing all these Dark Souls bosses being destroyed in support of Able Gamer's goal of making gaming more accessible to everyone. Keep up the good work, everyone, and hello from the front row. All right, so we're gonna do a, uh, another air roll skip here to skip to the bottom of catacombs. Like this whole area, like even if you don't do air rolls, you can get to the bottom of this area super fast. It's just like, you know, vertical drop down, so. But yeah, and now we have some bone wheels and hopefully they don't mess with us too much. They can be very scary. Oh okay. my goodness. <sighs> okay, <laughs> they're just quitting out for safety. And if you don't know, the reason, like, like one of the things these quitouts are useful for is they reset these enemies. Um, so we use them quite a lot. And the game is timed by in-game time. So you lose a little bit of time on uh, quitouts from the stand-up animation. But Still worth not dying. Yeah. This is a boss. Yeah, there's Pinwell by Pinwell. <laughs> This is one of my favorite areas to run through, Tomb of the Giants. It's like pitch black, but like if you just practice it a lot, you kind of know where everything is, at least in terms of uh, where you want to go. So we're just going to run through it real quick. Yeah, most people casually will not know exactly where to go, so they'll get lost, and there's yeah. a lot of enemies down here, and you need to find a lantern. It's, it's like a whole thing. Yeah, but it has actually really nice parkour that you get to do running through it in a speed run. There's a jump I could do right here that would save a little bit of time, but it's a little risky, so we're just going to go this way. I'm just going to not take a bonfire. I think we got pl we're pr pretty good on time here, so even if we have to make a long run back to Nito, it'll be okay. Very nice. Yeah. That was a decent Tomb of the Giants. Okay, we gotta take a, we, so since we didn't do that one jump I was talking about, we need a little more damage for red tier stone ring setup, so I'm gonna just swap to Dust Crown Wing and back. So now we're gonna do a really cool AI cancel on Nito. Hopefully it goes well. It, it's, it's really bad when it goes wrong, but uh, if, if executed correctly, this will make this boss fight really fast and consistent, actually. Whew. I gotta focus on this. Okay, that was bad. might have been too slow. Yeah, I, I interacted with the fog wall so slowly that it ruined the whole thing. But we can redo it, it's just gonna lose time. It's okay. This is another instance of setting up an AI break. Yeah. So I need to now get back to where I was with my HP. Um, need to have this equipped. Do I have everything correct here? Yes, I do. All right, we'll try it again. Those of you familiar with this boss, there is a lot of enemies in it, and having an AI break here is very nice. That was also really slow. Very nice. Ah. That 
that was great. So how to redo it there? Because I, I just interacted with that fog wall so slow it made it not work, but we got it second try. That's good. All right, and um, we can probably close the uh, hold on the bid war now for the final uh, ending. Or do you want to? I guess we can wait until we get right by Gwyn. So we, that's that's going to end in probably like 40, 50 seconds or so. First, we want to get uh, hit by this Black Knight to set up Retro Stone Ring. Nice. Right. No trolling. Yeah, that was actually fast. That's good. I would say once we get off this, uh, there's a bridge coming up. As soon as we get off that, that's probably where we should close it. Hopefully, chat is spamming Frank or Z's right now. Yeah, if if, uh, if anyone wants to pretend like they're in the Speed Souls community, this would be the time where you post all of your Frank or Z's at the end of a run. Only dog emotes. Get those last minute donations in. It's really close. It's really close. All right. Let's see it. Call it now. One last refresh. A valiant effort, Dark Lord donators, but Link the Fire is what we're Ooh, going with. Ooh, Link the Fire, wow. Very okay. close, $60 different. That's all it was. Usually, Dark Lord wins. That's, that's an upset, I would say. Okay. All right, so this uh, final boss is pretty straightforward. We got a Hornet Ring, and we got a big weapon. We're going to parry him and hit him with the weapon. All right. That's one. That's two. And... Very nice. That's Dark Souls, all bosses. Smooth, Smooth time. Run. That was very good. <laughs> yeah, that was a pretty decent run. What was the final time on that? We are looking at a 1.20.16. Oh, that wasn't that great, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty great to all of us, I think. It, 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 that's, that felt like a good run. I guess it felt better than it actually was. Um, but yeah, so uh, thanks for being with me, Matt, by the way. Absolutely. Uh, you did a great job. Uh, thank you, Conception, for uh, doing the hosting. I appreciate that. Thank you, GDQ, for having me on. This is always a blast to do in-person runs for you guys. Um, shout outs to Speed Souls. If, if anybody wants to learn how to speed run any of the Souls games, um, join the Speed Souls Discord. There's a lot of people there that are uh, willing to teach you all kinds of strats. They're very passionate. Um, but yeah, we like these that, games. Yeah, yeah, we <laughs> like them a little, probably maybe a little too much. Yeah. Um, they also torture us as well. So uh, yeah, also if you want to check out more runs of me running Dark Souls, follow my channel. I'm Regal. But yeah, that's it though. Thank you guys. Thanks for having us. Thank you. All right, let's keep it going for Regal. I cannot believe how some of past some of those bosses were down. Keep it going, y'all. Keep it going. Incredible, incredible job. Now, we had a lot of love coming in for Regal. Wish we could have gotten to it all, of course, but wanted to give a couple shout outs here. A $100 donation from Soap Sinclair that simply says, Frank Z. Thank you so much. All right, y'all. Well, I hope you have enjoyed our first full day here at GDQX at TwitchCon Live. My name has been Conception. I will be uh, wrapping up hosting duties for today, but come on by tomorrow where you can see me do a speed run of Pokemon Pearl if that's something you're into. Uh, for now, we are going to get ready to finish out day one of GDQ Express. Thank you so much, Conception. Audience, can we get one more round of applause for that amazing Dark Souls 3 run and for all of the amazing runners that we've had today at Games Done Quick Express. It really has been a day packed of amazing speedruns. And you know what? It's not over because today was only day one of the event. We've still got two more of these to go. Everyone out there, did you have a good first day at TwitchCon? Did you enjoy it? I'm hearing some yeahs, I'm hearing some cheer, and that's exactly what I want to hear. And let me tell you what, so did we, because over the course of this day, we raised $8,825 
for the Able Gamers Foundation. That is incredible. Thank you all so much for your generosity. It has been so much fun being back here at TwitchCon. Thank you so much to Twitch for having us. It's just been an incredible time, and we are loving it so much. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there still are two more days of TwitchCon. There still are two more days of Games Done Quick Express, but we are wrapping things up for the night. Don't worry, we will be back tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time, so make sure to come back. Check us out then. Trust me, you don't want to miss it, because if you do, I'm going to tell you what, you're going to have a bad time. Da 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 da.